The following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll-free, 1-800-610-7035. Our email address, exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV, and our main website, that is going to be undergoing a drastic change, I am told, over the next couple of weeks at www.exxonradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Lieutenant General Retired William G. Jerry Boykin. He was one of the original members of the U.S. Army's Delta Force. He was privileged to ultimately command these elite warriors in combat operations. Later, the general commanded all the Army's Green Berets, as well as the Special Warfare Center and School. In his 36 years in the Army, Lieutenant General Boykin also served with a tour with the Central Intelligence Agency. Now, he has participated in clandestine operations around the world and served his last four years in the Army as Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence. Today, he is an ordained minister with a passion for spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ and encouraging Christians to become warriors in king, in God's kingdom. So I guess we can say he went from the military soldier to a non-word Christian soldier. His website is www.kingdomwarriors.net. And General Boykin, welcome to the X-Zone. Well, thank you very much, Rob. It's a privilege to be with you. General, there's a lot going on in the Middle East. We have ISIS, who has beheaded a second journalist. We have Iran that is saying, hey, you know what, we're going to start, um, hmm, well, what are we going to do? Are we going to get involved? Are we going to get, are we going to support? Uh, how are we going to fight ISIS? We have Israel yeah. smack dab in the middle, and, and, and Israel is, is, the, is the birthplace of Christianity. Yeah, it certainly is. And, and yes, uh, are we going to get involved? We, the United States, mm-hmm. uh, and I can't, we are involved at, at this point. The problem is that our involvement has been somewhat feckless up to this point. There's there's no real strategy associated with it. It's It's been kind of a knee-jerk reaction. Now, uh, can I point out, Rob, that uh, uh, it's important for listeners to understand that ISIS is not a new phenomenon, nor right. are beheadings. ISIS has been around since, uh, really since the late 90s. It, it, it became much more popular and well-known uh, in about uh, 2003, 2004, when it was known as uh, Al-Qaeda in Iraq under the leadership of a guy named Abu Musab al-Zakawi, who was killed in 2006 in a drone strike. But we've been watching these people, and their methodology has been beheadings. They've beheaded uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of people. Uh, So there's nothing new here. The question is whether America is going to step up to this evil now in a uh, a coordinated and, uh, and, and serious sort of way. And up to this point, there's no... 
there's nothing positive coming out of our administration that would uh, lead us to believe that uh, that America is going to take the right steps. I hope that's going to change. Mm-hmm. Well, n- no disrespect meant here, General, but wh- I would think uh, as a citizen that my government, my military, would have contingency plans just in case these these acts happened, that they would be able to react quickly in order to suppress or totally delete the threat how come there's nothing in in, in yes, the, I, nothing here i i know and and trust me i'm not offended by that uh, because uh, you're absolutely right I, I agree with you and you would think that since we've been watching isis especially mm-hmm. for over a decade that we would we would be uh prepared right now to uh start an all-out campaign against them and the reality is we we have watched them, but we have prepared apparently no plans, no strategic concepts for how to deal with them. And, you know, that is that reflects, though, uh, sort of an ongoing uh, attitude by the American administration. It's almost as if, uh, you know, on the one hand, we support the very people we should be uh, condemning and going after. Uh, and a good example of that is how we supported the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt when they overthrew Hosni Mubarak, and yeah. Mubarak was, while he was a despot, uh, he was still less of a threat to the Middle East, to world stability, to Israel, and even to the United States than was the Muslim Brotherhood. But we supported the Muslim Brotherhood. We did the same thing in Libya when we supported the rebels that killed uh, Muammar Gaddafi. Uh, there's no sound reason or logic for us to support them given that they were also part of al-Qaeda. And then we have supported the mm-hmm. wrong side in Libya, I mean in uh, Syria uh, as well, because even though, uh, you know, the leader of Syria is in fact a despot, an evil man himself, as Bashir al-Assad. General, we've got to take uh, a two-minute not- commercial break here, sir. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Okay. But uh, General right. Boykin is our very special guest this hour, www.kingdomwarriors.net. Lieutenant General Boykin and I will be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Named one of the world's greatest psychics, Elizabeth Joyce is now giving readings worldwide via Skype. Elizabeth Joyce is recognized for her clairvoyant ability to help find missing persons, her analysis of dreams, past life regression work, mediumship, and her accurate predictions. Elizabeth has been a frequent guest on the Exxon radio show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, now for several years. For an appointment with Elizabeth Joyce, call 201-934-8986 or Skype at elizabeth.joyce. And for more information, you can always visit Elizabeth Joyce online at www.new-visions.com. Exonation, uh, Lieutenant General William G. Jerry Boykin, retired from the United States Army, is my special guest this hour. His website is www.kingdomwarriors.net. General, with all the, the 
the intelligence uh, that is available to the the decision makers high in high places in Washington, why weren't the proper steps taken in preparing for what I'm, I'm sure many within the intelligence agencies knew was going to happen with with ISIS and and other terrorists? Well. I think that there's a tendency to just ignore the threat and think that it's going to go away mm. or just simply not believe that it uh, it could be a, a serious threat to American interest. Uh, the reality is we have a pattern of that, as I've said earlier, yeah. of, uh, of ignoring the threats and as, as a result of ignoring them, then not uh, taking the necessary steps to prepare uh, to defend against those. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like the whole situation with Russia where we – you know, push this theoretical reset button. I think this administration thinks that they pushed a reset button with uh, Islamic extremists. And, you know, it hasn't worked out very well, uh, either with Russia or the Islamic extremists. So we are totally unprepared. We even have them inside the United States. And instead of standing against them and trying to uh, to ferret them out, what we're actually doing is tolerating them and allowing them to get stronger. Well, isn't that because the United States, just like Canada, is too politically correct? It is the bane of our existence, Rob. It is uh, in the public. Uh, let me say this because I'm writing a book right now with uh, Dr. Stu Weber up in Portland, Oregon, and mm-hmm. um, and that's one of the things that I point out in the book that. Political correctness is is the result of a lack of moral courage. When people don't have the, the either the the guts mm-hmm. or we could use a more flowery term to for, for what they're missing, uh, to stand up and speak straight and 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 speak honestly and uh, we've got so many people now today that don't have the courage. So what they do is they default to political correctness and wind up saying nothing it's killing us yeah, but is 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 that the reason sir or is it because the these these at one time very minority groups actually used the, the system that's in place to their advantage and they know damn well that if you were to say anything against uh islam or against uh muslims or or against any other religious philosophy that you're going to be you're going to be targeted and you're going to receive the label as as a person who is anti-Islam, anti-whatever the organization is. And this is something that I don't think anyone would like to have tagged on to them in, a, in the in the social society. Well, you, you're, I think you're making my point. Mm-hmm. You see, the, the people who, who speak in these politically correct terms and say nothing are the people that don't have the courage yeah. to tell the truth regardless of the consequences, regardless of the fact that they're going to be called intolerant, Islamophobes, or whatever. And, and I, it's, it comes back to a single issue, and it's a lack of courage. You've got to stand up. You've got to know what you believe yeah. to begin with. And then when you know what you believe and you know what you're willing to stand on, then you've got to have the courage to do it. And that's why we have so much political correctness today. People are not willing to take the wrath of these special interest groups or the media or the people around them, uh, it stands for what they know is right. Well, I have always believed, sir, that if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And what I see is the vast majority of society becoming ostriches. They put their heads in their sa- in the sand, stick their butts up in the air, hoping and uh, hoping that everything will be all right when their head comes back up. And it doesn't. It just makes everything worse. And when was it? In the, in the United States of America that it went from we the people to I the person because there's a lot of, there's a lot of Saturday morning or, uh, quarterbacks out there who, oh, geez, you know, if I was the president, if I was a congressman, if I was a senator, if I was this, I was that, they all have a great game plan. But when, when it comes to a time to, uh, to put their mouth into action, boy, they sit down really fast. When did this all change in America? Because that's not the way America was founded. That's not the way early Americans were. No, you're absolutely right. You know, first of all, I think uh, Woodrow Wilson uh, was was part of this uh, shift. And then, uh, you know, in the 30s, when Mm -hmm. Franklin Delano Roosevelt came along with 
with his idea of a of a new deal um, we really began to see i think a major shift away from